Now we are ready to proceed to the open forum. We will follow the mechanics we had last time. We will give, uh, we will entertain the questions that were sent to us online via email or text messaging. And then afterwards, we will also entertain the questions to be raised by the participants about those who will raise their hand, if we still have time. The resource speaker and or the reactor may ans answer or interpolate. Okay, so may I raise the very first question here from uh, brother, sir, Ramon De Leon. At saka kasali na rin yung kay Sister Soledad Tubay kasi they are very much related. From brother Ramon, sabi niya, ask ko lang po na sa ngayong panahon, sino na ang nagmimayari ng lupain kung saan nakatayo ang ruins ng Santa Monica sa Samonte Park sa Cavite City? Meron po bang balak ang OAR na i-restore ang nasabing ruins? Alam ko po, Father Emil Pilatan, alam ko po na kayo ay isang iho lehitimo de la ciudad de Cavite. At yung kay Sister Soledad Tubay, ang tanong niya, ano po kaya ang plano sa Santa Monica Belfry and the remaining ruins dito sa Cavite City na pinaligiran na ng informal settlers. Meron pang nakatira doon sa remaining structure. I believe this is an important part of church history and even the history of the city. Father Emil. Okay, yes, mga ka, mga paisa no, yo soy no lehit kabiteño lehitimo, no. Ah Unang-una, ang structure ng ano ng Belfry, yung Bell Tower ng Santo Monica, wala sa Samonte Park. Outside ho yun. yun. Sa loob ng Samonte Park, yung ang naiwan do structure, ruins, ay ang Portabaga. So, the Belfry na tinatukoy ninyo is outside of Samonte Park. No? Napapaligirin ngayon ng mga informal settlers. Yan po ang uh, actually the Church of San Nicolas de Tolentino opened in 1616 but it was named Santa Monica when the AR sisters no opened a school beside the church kaya instead of San Nicolas ginawa na lang Santa Monica it was leased to the AR sisters no after the Philippine Revolution okay now sino ang may-ari ng lupa of course ang may-ari po ng lupa ay ang mga recoletos No, ay uh, sa archival digital archives namin, no, nakita ko po ang mga resibo na ang mga recoletos ay nagbayad ng property tax sa American colonial government in the 1920s. When you pay the property tax with the receipt at hand hanggang ngayon, nagpapatunay na ang may-ari ng lupa na kinatatawin ng Belfry ng Santa Monica Belfry Church as we call it today, still, the legitimate owner are the recollects. Kaso lang, after World War II, hindi na ho yung binalikan ng mga recoletos kasi magulo na ang panahon yon after liberation. So they, according to oral tradition, they allowed settlers in, to settle in that lot which is still owned by the recollects. Now, marami nagpunta doon, pinakita ang resibo. Ewan ko ang ginagawa ng mga recollectors ngayon. Now, how about the bell tower, that belfry? Now, in when we were preparing the... That was in 2016. Remember, in 2016, we celebrated the 400-year uh, presence of the recollects in the province of Cavite. In 2014, there was already a proposal on the part of San Sebastian College, Cavite City, na gumawa sila ng hakbang with the help of the local municipal government na gawing historical site yung Belfry. Anong ginawa nila? Ayun ang tanong ko. From 2014 to 2016. And after the closing ceremony, what did they do? So remember, there are recollects in Cavite City, in San Sebastian. What were they doing at that time? We already proposed to move at that time, no, andun pa si 
ika nga eh um, si ano uh, ah isang ex-recoleto no na member pa yata ng ano ng ng municipal uh, government he was i think he was still yes vice mayor before he was a uh, member of the provincial board of Cavite City and became vice mayor a councilor no si Ed Monterona and what did they do did they move or ang gagawin nila hihintayin pang municipal government na mag-move but i think initiative please initiative no initiative no those who were in charge between 2014 2016 and afterwards you're supposed to move if you're interested in preserving our history in Cavite City it shows that you're not interested sorry to say you're not interested and that is tragedy you call yourself a recoleto and you don't want to preserve the past that makes us who we are as recoleto so i'm castigating excuse me if i'm very frank i'm really frank of what you have done from 2014 to 2016 and after 20 when we closed the fourth centenary celebration in bacoor cavite in the church of saint michael the archangel have you moved have you done something if you really love our order in the province of Cavite? No. Una tayo magturuan. No. Andyan kayo. Then move. Take the initiative. Yan po masasabi ko. Thank you, Father Emil, for that very emphatic point which replied to this uh, question. I will go see Professor Romanilius. Does he have uh, something to add to that? Before 2016, <clears throat> Father Pablo Panedas, who was uh, a lover of Augustian Recollect legacies in the Philippines, especially churches, mentioned that to me. I said, the Recollects in the Philippines should try their best to promote this one of the relics, last relics of the recollects in Cavite City, and that was the Belfry. And what was supposed to be done? First, we have to declare that area, meaning the national government, the national museum, the national historical, as a historical landmark, so that because of the law, the national cultural heritage law, the people there, the uh, informal settlers, <clears throat> those squatters, lang yun, uh, would be driven away. No, so it, 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 this should not be the move of the the local government, but the national historical commission to declare that area national cultural. A treasure or national landmark and then they can do something to to restore to rehabilitate to drive away all the informal settlers from the area but up to now nothing was done thank you thank you professor thank you father emil the second question here is from uh, USJR from Sir Rafael Sangrador. Ang tanong niya, as a catechist myself, I'd like to have a glimpse into how the first OAR missionaries conducted catechesis. Like, did they have lay catechists, etc.? Father Emil? Order. They have lay catechists. They have also fiscals. No, they are lay leaders. No, formed and trained by the missionaries. No, to uh, continue the catechetical formation of the people in their absence, especially in far-flung areas called visitas. No, or chap area chapels. No, uh, they were trained. No, they were lay catechists, and many of them are members of the third order. No, which which we call today the secular fraternities. No, now, how were they trained? Of course, 
no, basing on the Synod of Manila of 1582, the first thing that they should do is to teach the children, candidates for baptism, to read and write, no, the alphabet. Then the basic prayers, the Ten Commandments. It's more of memorization. Then the explanation will come later. And they are allowed to participate in the liturgy so they could memorize the prayers and there will be a question and answer on the, during the sermon of the priest. So there is an active participation between the priest who was delivering the homage and the children who were attending the uh, liturgical service. There were several methods. No? Not only that, no? there are plays, religious plays, no? which be, became, we might say, vehicles of catechesis and evangelization, no? which were written and produced by the missionaries themselves. These plays you know, uh, are also um, um, about the passion of the Lord Jesus, no? the birth of Christ, the nativity, and other, we might say, the lives of the saints. So these are the things that the, 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 the mission, and the recollectors and the other were you know, employing. There's many methods. No? And the most beautiful of these methods was the procession the pageantry of the images, which are catechetical. No? Ngayon po ang prosesyon, no? ang nangyayari, pagandahan ng imahin. Pabonggan, no. During that time, there was a novena, and the novena, there was catechesis. And the end of the novena, the tenth day will be the procession, culminating the celebration in honor of their patron saint. So, these catechesis that are also embedded in the novenas are one of the methods employed by the missionaries in evangeliz evangelizing our ancestors. Thank you. Thank you, Father Emil. The next year is not really a question, but an observation seeking for a reaction or comment from uh, Professor Romanilius. From Brother Jasil, yung istatwa po sa Fort Santiago, evangelizers of the Philippines. Apat lang ang istatwa. One for Augustinians, one for Franciscans, one for Dominicans, and one for Jesuits. Walang recoletos. Reaction po. Professor. I cannot. Saan? Kailan? Huh? Especially in the Church. <laughs> Pinid na. Ang daming mga walang ginawa ang mga recoletos na when there was opportunity for them. For example, bakit hindi naging national shrine of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and San Sebastian? Bakit wala? Bakit nga? So, ang daming mga pagkukulang natin. So, huwag na naman tayo pumunta sa labas. We'll start with the at home. Charity begins at home. Let us first teach our students, our parishioners, our uh, uh, own uh, no, seminarians about the rich recollect heritage. Kasi pag hindi natin alam, paano tayo maka? You cannot give what you have. So maraming pagkukulang expressed by the absence of that uh, statue. Oh, at marami pa. So, yung mga seminarians, going back, balik tayo kung anong dahil, ano bang dahilan kung bakit nagkukulang. Hindi kagaya ngayon na ang daming mga conference from which we could learn so many things about the recollects. For example, bakit hindi alam ng mga buhulano nga ang recoleto sa Baklayon, gumawa ng Misa Baklayana. Kasi walang nag-research noon. Nalaman lang in 2004, marami tayong pagkukulang na ngayon dapat solusyonan natin. Gawa tayo ng isang directory of Hussian Recollect Cultural Heritage at gawa tayo ng 
Agustinian Rec Agustinian Recollect Arch Agustinian Recollect Cultural Heritage Day in order to promote kung tayo hindi natin alam paano kaya malalaman yung iba kasi kung ang nalalaman ng iba galing din sa mga mali ng iba na hindi rekoleto so paulit-ulit ang mali so dapat magkumpisa tayo ngayon and this is the very good suggestion of the Recollect Educational Apostolate of the Philippines and the Commission of Father Leander Barot na dapat magkumpisa muna tayo mag Turuan mo natin sarili natin tapos punta na tayo sa labas. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Kahit nakulan yung istatwa, our contributions are pieces of evidences no, of uh, how fruitful our forefathers were in their mission words. Uh, another one here. Meron po bang Recoleto na naging arsubispo ng Maynila from Brother Jasin? Agustinian Recollect Archbishop of Manila si Bishop Jose Aranguren de San Agustin no he was the archbishop of Manila no before he died no uh, before um uh, before his before Meliton Mar be archbishop Meliton Martinez during the Gombursa controversy so Jose Aranguren de San Agustin was Archbishop of Manila between, I think, 1849, 59, no? 1849 to, and up to, uh, up to the uh, 1860s, no? Before, before Meliton Martinez took over. He, Meliton Martinez was a diocesan priest who took over when Aranguren died, no? And one of the contributions of Bishop, Archbishop Jose Aranguren de San Agustin is was he invited the daughters of charity to come to the Philippines and he encouraged people to deposit to the Banco Espanol Philippines, which is now the Banco Philippine Islands, to combat your usury by depositing the money of the Archdiocese in Banco uh, Espanol Filipino, which is now the Bank of the Philippine Islands. So, so these were some of his contributions. And most of all, he defended the rights of the Filipino secular clergy, especially the parish of Quiapo, when the governor general wanted to give the parish of Quiapo to the Franciscans. So, Bishop Archbishop refused and even offered his head no, on the, before the general, you cut off my head if you still insist of giving no, the parish church of Quiapo to the Franciscans. So that was how courageous Archbishop Aranguren of Manila, Archbishop of Manila at that time. Thank you, Father Emil. There are two questions here that, that are very related to each other from Ramon Villon. Kung maraming kapalpakan, e anong paniniwalaan natin? And then uh, related to that is from Sister Digna Pachis. What should be done to correct all these errors po? Professor? Palpakan. So, naman. Maraming mga kamalian. Mali lang. So, we have to go to the sources. We have to go to the recollect sources. If you want to study about the recollects, you read the recollect sources. If you want to study about the Franciscans, the Jesuits, the Dominicans, you read their history. For example, Itong Balaanong Bahandi, they wrote about the churches in Katmon, in Consolacion, in Danao, in Mandawi, and in Compostela. They read about the Jesuit sources. Diyos ko naman, you read the recollect sources, Silicinio Ruiz, Patricio Marcelian, because they know the history. They have the causes notables. Ngayon, kung maraming kapalpakan ng mga pangalan, kasi you did not go to the recollect sources. Also, the history of Bohol. Sabihin niyo na 1595, that was what the recollect historians say. Now, according to the Jesus, na sila mismo ang dumating doon sa Bohol, they arrived there on November 17, 1596. Sinong paniniwalaan ninyo? Ang mga recollectors o mga Jesus? Siyempre yung mga Jesuits. When you read about the history of Negros, and uh, the recollects have so many sources there. Remember, the best source is the Cosas notables de una parroquia. 
Kasi yung mga pare dyan, nililista nila ng mga noteworthy events na fortunately si Father Licinio Ruiz, yung libro niya, two volumes, Synopsis Historica, galing doon sa mga kosas notables. So, sinong paniniwalaan ninyo about the France, about the uh, Nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno? Maniniwala ka sa mga GMA reporters? When the when when the markers uh, I, I I think I know the author of one of the markers there si ano when they mention uh, about San Sebastian sinong paniniwala niyo yung mga nasa National Historical Institute by the way before we ask for a marker from the National Historical Commission or non National Historical Institute first we provide them with sources Spanish so that when we request for a marker, they cannot say, ah, wala kaming sources dyan. Ah, wala kaming mga, mga archival manuscripts dyan. Ah, wala kaming mga libro tungkol sa Recoletos. Pues, bigay na namin sa iyo. I asked Father Lauro Larlar na when, when Father Bangkaya and the committee, uh, two, two man committee lang pala kami noon, Father Bangkaya and I, were working for the two markers in Intramuros and in Maria Orosa. They could not complain. I asked for the Larla. Bigyan natin lahat ng mga Spanish sources, mga libro ni Cuesta, ni Marcilian, etc. Parang di ka natin say, oh, we do not know anything about the recollects in Intramuros. My goodness, bibigyan ko kayo, binigyan na namin doon mga libro ni St. Ezekiel. Personally, may mga picture kayo, may resibo. So, alam na namin na wala silang alam. So, nilagay, binigyan na namin ng sources. So, sinong Sinong pananiwala, paniniwalaan ninyo? Yun ang sources ng mga religious orders na were assigned there. Not those who wrote about the recollects and walang alam. Wala sila. They should have consulted Father Emil Kilatan na nandito lahat sa archibo recolecto ang mga sources natin. Uh, problema lang, kailangan Espanyol ang alam niyo at saka paleography kasi may mga mga sulat na hindi maintindihan. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. I guess uh, your reply and the recommendations you offered earlier are enough to answer also the question of uh, Sister Lydia Morales. She was asking earlier May we know the relevance of Professor Romanilio's presentation. Now may I proceed to the two questions here that have something to do with the role of the media for your comment also from Brother Jazil. Pwede nating sabihan ang GMA kasi under formation si Maris Umali sa Cofradia de Nuestra Señora de la Salud. And then from Sister Soledad Tubay, the popular media mistakes are the exact reasons why researchers are not supposed to use them in their works. Your comment, your reaction to this, uh, Professor Romanilius? Mm. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, those who teach you know, research writing, are advised, uh, used to advise their students or still advise their students to avoid Wikipedia kasi hindi ito mga experts. So most probably kinupya lang ito ng mga, sa mga sources na wala ding alam. So Wikipedia is free, free for all ka dyan, Wikipedia. So uh, teachers of research writing are are usually tell the student to avoid Wikipedia. Hindi to sources na reliable. Ano? So, uh, ano, ano yung isang question ni Ma'am Tubay? The popular media mistakes are the exact reasons why researchers are not supposed to use them in their works. So, yun nga. Uh, 
Yung unang question, pwede nating sabihan ang Jimmy kasi under formation si Maris Umale. Oh, why not? Yeah. You have to to hit the roots of the ano. So ang Jimmy nagkumpisa ng ano, kamalian diyan. Sabihan ka agad sila na, well, you have to stop it. You have to cease and desist. For example, yung sa kay Benito de San Pablo na siya nagdala ng Nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno. Pinanganak siya 1685, dinala niya 1606. Paano ba yun? Paano niya madala hindi siya pinanganak? So, ganun din. So, please, we, have, we go to the source of the error and tell them to stop spreading the wrong news. Stop spreading the information. Para in the future, kasi alam mo naman sa Facebook, di ba, mayroong mga throwback, mayroong mga memories. Paulit-ulit lang yon. So, tigilan na natin ito. For example, yung mga Augustines na nagsabi na si Senesike, 1899 naging obispo sa Paso. Hindi po, 1896. So, pag hindi natin sabihan sa mga Augustinians, by the proper ano, itong commission natin dito, So, paulit-ulit na yun next year. Lalabas ng lalabas yun. Dapat tigilan na natin sila ngayon. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I will entertain this question from uh, Emily Dakanay. Father Emil, ask ko lang po, bakit po sa Quiapo Church napunta ang image ni Jesus Nazareno? Kasi po, di ba, dumating si Mount Carmel dito May 25, 1621. Si Jesus Nazareno ay 1650. Bakit po hindi sa San Sebastian nilagay? Thanks po and God bless. Okay. Okay. No, uh, correction please. No, Ang enthronement ng Mahal de Virgen del Carmen de San Sebastian was on May 5, 1620. The opening, the inauguration of the community. No? The community was founded on February 26, 1621, but the inauguration, the enthronement of the image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in San Sebastian was on May 5, 1621. Bakit hindi binigay sa San Sebastian? Simple lang po, no? Iba po ang community ng San Sebastian. It is actually a retreat house. Ang origin yan, when it was found, retreat house po. Hindi yan po parokya. Why San Sebastian? Because the patron of the donor no, was, a, uh, was San Sebastian. He was a soldier. Kaya one of the conditions not to change the name of the patron of the chapel that was built there before was that what, what, that was what the, uh, uh, the condition made by the donor himself. Ngayon, Quiapo was already a parish to decongest the devotees who were concentrated in Intramuros. I'm just making a hypothesis. Kasi may nabasa po ko sa Cosas Notables or the, I think the Historia General. No? Webes pa lang ho ng gabi. Puno na ang patio ng Recoletos. Because remember, the devotion of the Jesus is done every Friday. Hindi na magkasya ang mga tao. So, According to some sources, no, the Archbishop of Manila at that time, no, no, ordered the recollects to give the image to Quiapo para madikonjes ang mga devotees. Yun lang po ang aking hypothesis. It's still, it has to be researched po. Hindi ho pwede binigay sa San Sebastian because San Sebastian has a different, it was not a parish. No, the purpose of San Sebastian was it, was, it should serve as a retreat house for recollect missionaries who want to re-energize themselves in prayer. While Quiapo was a parish already, kaya nga binigay sa uh, Quiapo ang another image of the Resto Padre Jesus Nazareno. And it would accommodate bigger devotees. Yan po ang that. This is only a hypothesis. I'm, I'm still looking for historical documents to prove my hypothesis. Yan lang po ang masasabi ko. Thank you, Father Emil. And I guess uh, Professor Manilius has something to say about this, especially that he is uh, good at uh, pointing out some uh, lapses in the historical account. Professor?
Ah, by the way, I would like to add, what is the relevance of my talk with the history? My, this is a history. We have to have facts. We have to have ba uh, basis from archival materials or other sources. Ngayon, Father Emil is talking about the history of the recollection in the Philippines, the contributions. Ngayon, kung ang mga, what we teach our constituents, mali-mali. So, uh, my relevance is I pinpoint the mistakes based on our recollect sources. That is the relevance of this, uh, of this talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. From Tessie Ponteras. Salamat sa rich input on how OAR missionaries impacted the lives of the Filipinos, not only spiritually, but culturally and economically also. The OAR missionaries, according to your history, are community builders and movers. I am just curious now at present how the new wave of OAR missionaries able to preserve and even continue these rich legacies of the first wave of OAR missionaries. Comment, Father Emil. And one of the most important thing when you preach the good news, which our early, our ancestors, the early missionaries, was to learn first the language and the culture of the people. Yan po pinaka-importante, learn the language so there should be no communication barrier. And it's being done. Our missionaries in Indonesia, they had to study Batak Indonesian before they could... They could, uh, we might say, go and administer a parish. No, they had to study and they have to learn to interact with the people. This is the first first rule. No, no communication barriers. Learn the language, learn the culture of the people, and appreciate that culture. That's the time you could evangelize when you know how to speak their language. So ito na po masasabi ko. No, this is the continuation that our present missionaries are doing. You cannot preach the good news without first learning the language of the people. And that's the first rule in evangelization. Thank you, Father Emil. Another question from Sir Leroy of USJR. Good morning, everyone and fathers. Here at USJR, we have started researching on the Recoletos missionary presence in the then Diocese of Cebu. This is also in relation to the project initiated by the Archdiocese of Cebu entitled Suroi Saisai sa Subuanong Simbahan in relation to the 500 years of the introduction of Christianity in the country. Soon, God willing, in the new building to be constructed, an area will be allocated for a museum to showcase Recoleto's history in the Archdiocese of Cebu from 1621 up to the present. Any comment? Okay. So I would like to, uh, no, to, um, to congratulate the move no, to build a building and allot a space. But the question, how big is the space? Second, is the space permanent? Or again, it could be transform into another function hall what happened before in that museum that was of the museum in honor of father father oscar de la rosa in the main campus of of cebu of usjr it was a museum a beautiful museum it was what what happened it was neglected afterwards and what happened to the artifacts when it was not transformed into another function room Nobody cares. No, there was no continue. There was no sustainability. There was no maintenance. No? I hope that space that would be allotted would be permanent, big, and that would serve as a museum. And hopefully that museum will be maintained and sustained so that people can appreciate his. To tell you frankly, no, Filipinos no, are not historically conscious. We are not, we are not his, history conscious. 
Uh, that's why we are committing the same mistakes as of our ancestors. Because we are not conscious of our own history. No, because we don't appreciate history the way that is being taught today. No, so I hope that building with the allotted space will be permanent, sustained, and expandable. Because history no, is a teacher, not just an artifact. Thank you. See, Professor, my like that. Uh, we are now in the last stages of producing the book, The Augustinian Recollects in Cebu since 1621. Uh, there we have some problems with the indexing. It is going to be a 335 page book. Uh, yeah, I have really done the research and it has been laid out and it's already in the printing press and you have to wait a few more weeks for this book. This is very interesting, meaning the fact that the University of San Jose de Coletos is interested in, in coming out with this history of the, of the recollection in Cebu because not much had been written uh, about the recollection in Cebu. Even some priests there don't know the difference between the Augustinians and the Augustinian recollects. First helps to start with teaching them what is a recollect, what is an Augustinian. And I would like to also note that what is the new wave of the Persian or the Augustinian recollect missionaries of today. First, they have to be informed well in the novitiate, in the Recoletos 101, in Casisciaco Recoletos Seminary, and also in the religious education courses in, in the universities. First, they have to teach them well, provide them with good textbooks, provide them with good information, and then, if we already know history, if we really love our own history and heritage, it is very easy for us to spread to the whole Philippines, to the whole world, what we know. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. The next question uh, is seeking for some uh, dogmatic elements here, no? Uh, from uh, James Biliran. Sorry for this question, but I like to hear the views of the speaker about this. He talked about OER Marian devotions. They, there are many, like Nuestra Señora de la Consolación, del Carmen, de la Salud. And we have heard from many people that Nuestra Señora de la Salud is a miraculous image. Why are there some Marian images that seem to be more miraculous, popular than others? And how to say to people that all are the same and one is not better than the others? They all depict Mary, but it seems other images like La Salud seem to be more miraculous. Thank you. Professor Romanilios. There is only one Blessed Virgin Mary. There's only one. And she has, no, she has many titles because of the event that occurred. And then in that event, no, there was an impact. No. More miraculous, more popular. That this, this is secondary. These are things, these are secondary. It's more of a personal experience how the Blessed Mother responded to the, pray, to the prayer of that devotee. But mind you, Nuestra Señora de la Consolación, del Carmen, de la Salud, no? No, Divina Pastora, these are just titles, but it refers to one person only, the Blessed Virgin, the Mother of Jesus, the Mother of God. And the titles are just, we might say, an expression of how you know, she relates with the devotees and how the devotees responded to a certain event in their lives. Remember, what is more important is our faith in God. And our faith in God can be more meaningful also if we ask the help of the intercession 
and prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whether she be the Mother of Perpetual Help, whether it be the Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, whether she be with the, the title no, of Our Lady of Constance. She is our mother. If she is the mother of Jesus, she is also our mother. Remember, no, on the cross when he was dying, no, no, Jesus said to Mary, Woman, behold your son. And looking at his beloved disciples, he said, Son, behold your mother. She did not say, um, Mother, behold your son. Son, behold our lady of la salud. Wala siya sinabi ganun. Mother lang po. Yan na po masasabi ko. Si Professor, may itadagdag? Professor? Okay, so thank you. From... Uh, Rafael Sangrado. Once I heard an OAR priest arguing something to this effect. Tolentine is more of an adjective. It may not serve as an Anglicis Anglicization of Tolentino, a place in Italy. In a word, he frowns at saying St. Nicholas of Tolentine and prefers St. Nicholas of Tolentino. Along this line, I can only think of the name of UNUR student paper entitled Tolentine Star where Tolentine serves as an adjective. What is your take po? Maraming salamat. Better. <laughs> Tolentine, Tolentino. Hey, this linguistics. Ako, I do not accept Tolentine personally. Huh? Because I know Tolentino as a place in Italy. And I don't like to translate it you know, Tolentine or when, in whatever language. Kasi tang, I do not accept. Hindi ako believe ng Tolentine na yan. Ako Tolentino. And so with Father Desena, Father Emilio Larlar, Tolentino sa amin. An Italian place in, in Europe, Italy. Tolentino. Kung si Father Emil Tolentine, okay siya. Edi wow, but personally, ako tolentino lang talaga ako. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, from Sister Corazon Padua, can we say the differentiating characteristic of the Augustan Recollects is community builders consistent with one heart and one mind? Or is that common to all religious orders? All of us, no, all the missionaries are community builders, but they have to they have to share their charism in community building. And one of the facts that we are you know, the recollects is this is community building is the pastor. No, remember how the recollect interact with his parishioners. That's why the famous. Author, Filipino, national artist, Nick Joaquin, described the recollect missionaries as the pastors of the Philippine mission. Of how they interacted and how they were heart and mind. And yet, there is emphasis on contemplation. No? Were inculcated in the communities. That's why one of the most beautiful, we might say, places to visit is the church built by a recoleto. No? It is what? A dignified place no? where in the form of the divir, we are told, the old constitution of the recollect, the primitive, we are told to spend more our resources in beautifying the house of God where we could worship with dignity and devotion. And the liturgy was magnificent in praising God. So, the center of that, this community building is the church. However, you cannot save the soul without also saving the body. That's why one of the characteristics of our community building is the community should be econop economically sustainable. Because the economy of the town will be the one to support the parish priests and their own parish church. That's why in every report that our recollects, no, uh, aside in Paris, not only the, the how many were baptized, how many the 
the, the weddings, but also the economy. What is the, the important thing of this town? Abaca, no? agriculture, fishing, etc. Because the economy sustains the livelihood of the people and also with the amount of money they were able to, 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 um, to get from their, to their uh, agricultural products, fish products, will also go to the church to sustain their own church. So that's the thing about community building that is recoleto. Okay? So the church and the economy and the way the people and the pastor, recollect past, interact with one another. One heart, one mind intent upon God. But remember, you cannot save the soul without also saving the body. The, econ the economics also play an important part in community building, the recoleto way. Thank you. Thank you. Father Emil, another one from Brother Jason. Kung nauna po ang imahe ng Del Carmen de San Sebastian, bakit nalipat sa OCD? Sa Discuss Carmelite sa New Manila, ang title ng National Shrine. Kasi tanda ko, hawak ng baste yung title na yun before. Okay. So, uh, may I answer that one? Because during the Spanish period, when the, when the image of Our Lady Ma was enthroned in the Church of San Sebastian on May 5, it is already well known in history. It is the only Carmel Shrine in the Philippines. Nadadala na po yan. Now, uh, I think the, C the, bishop, the, the Bishop of Cebu no, pro, ano, a petition to the CBCP na i-elevate ang, ang, ano, ang shrine, ang, ano, ang Carmel sa New Manila into a national shrine. Well, that's, that's the, uh, the, the, ano, the move of the OCD and the Bishop of Manila, at, Bishop of Cabao at that time. And it became also a Basilica Minor recently. So, we are now uh, telling the people, the community of San Sebastian, Manila, why not promote that San Sebastian Basilica is the first basilica in the Philippines and the first or the oldest Carmel Shrine in the Philippines. So that's the histo history. The title of National Shrine was only recent because of the CBCP, Bishop, etc. But in history, since 1621, San Sebastian has been the oldest Carmel Shrine in the country, where the first confraternity and the imposition of the Brown Scapular was held in the church. And history is our main witness, not just the titles that was given recently to New Manila. They came, it became only a parish in the 1970s. A shrine later on, national shrine later on, and later a basilica. But San Sebastian holds the first title, the oldest and the first basilica in the Philippines. Now, once you are a basilica, no, it, oversh no, it overshines the other titles because it is the highest title you can give to a local church with the image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in San Sebastian, Manila. You know po masasabi ko. Thank you, Father Ibil. Next question, Siguro, can be answered by both of you, no? by Professor and you, Padre. Well, from uh, Fray Ray J. Quevedo, our seminarian from Mindanao. Uh, good morning, everyone. I thank the speakers for their informative, informative lectures. However, I have observations which I hope to be addressed by them. Father Pedro Coro once declared the most glorious page in the history of the recollect missionaries in the Philippines is the conquest of Mindanao. But it appears that almost all the presentations are more situated only in Visayas and Luzon. Based on the presentations, Mindanao seems nothing remarkable except the mention of the famous El Padre Capitan. If there were any contribution of the OAR in Mindanao, what are those and how peculiar then the Mindanao missions from other recollect missions in the Philippines? How did it become the most glorious page of the history of the OAR missionaries in the Philippines? Thank you, Paul. Pages of the recollect history were written there in Mindanao 
especially during the Caraga revolt and the return of the Jesuits in 1859. Mindanao has always been a special place for the recollects for the simple reason that the, there were a lot of challenges there. They could not uh, sleep at, at night because of the surprise Moro attacks and this slave trading you know, uh, cottage industry of the Moros. They, and that's why in Mindanao, although it's one of the glorious pages of Recollect history, one or two churches survived there, built by the Recollects. Why? Because they all burned down. And remember that uh, when the uh, Jesuits returned to Mindanao in 1863, after they were rehabilitated in 1859 in the Philippines, Father Toribio Miguelia at that time wrote a very interesting book that says Conquistas de la Isla de Mindanao because so much blood, so many tears, so many hardships were shed in Mindanao. And then when everything was supposed to be returned to the recollects, they really complained because they said, what happened to our, what happened to the sacrifices we made since 1622? So we need some token of or remembrance. So they asked for the, uh, they asked that Cagayan de Oro and many other towns in Misamis Oriental be retained by the recollects as souvenir lang ba, remembrance of what they did. And in fact, the, the mandated return of the recollect mis recollect uh, mission missions in Mindanao to the Jesuits was stopped was stopped because we have to give credit to the efforts of the recollects okay and I would like to add also to what Father Emel as corollary to the community building the recollects were so much involved not only in preaching the gospel in dispensing with the sacraments the sacraments there they also teach, they also taught the people livelihood projects like what father mariano gutierrez did in hagna like what father fernando cuenca did in talisay like what father uh, uh, manuel uh, in balilihan and they, they had to teach the people how to plow the field kasi mga rebelde ito. Uh, so they went down to Balilian and the, the priest had to teach them how to plant bananas, how to plant uh, corn in order for them to survive. And so many other places that the recollects hands on sila or in Danao or in Compostela where the recollects taught the people how to produce wine, how to produce you know, exquisite uh, uh, white wine. So in order for them to earn extra money for their livelihood, the people there, in order to help the priest, they also help themselves. And in order to support the church, they also supported themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Father Emil? Okay, about Mindanao. So, many were written about Mindanao, but unfortunately, some only like uh, what is not in Oroqueta, no? the only one, one of the surviving churches built by a recollect. No? Also in Jimenez, no? in Mindanao, what is now, I think, Misamis Occidental. No? So, Misamis Oriental, that is from Cagayan de Oro, and Misamis Occidental, were the only, we might say, uh, uh, territories that were retained by the recollects. No? Now, uh, one thing that, that we have to be are the several more, aside from Padre, we might say, Capitan, we have also uh, Ramon Sueco, no? and another recollect who already no, organized, we might say, natives to fight against the um, Moro piratical raids. No? So there were actually we have three Moro fighters, no? and they were in, based in Mindanao. No? So we contributed in, in uh, we might say, of 
as with sustaining the mission and uh, sta staving off the M Muslim piratical attacks. So these are the glorious pages no, of our recollects in Mindanao. We don't mention it so because like, like what happened, many of the churches were destroyed, especially the old Cagayan de Oro church was destroyed during World War II. No? And uh, in, also in other places, no? they are renovated and even demolished. That's why we cannot, I did not mention particularly this church, the Mindanao, but it was only by passing because I only gave, gave some highlights because of limited time. That's all. Thank you, Father Emil. Uh, curious question lang from uh, Jazil. Meron pong Calle Recoleto sa may Ayala CBD? How is it related to the OAR? Okay, may, ito po ang istorya niyan. No? The Ayalas, no, our friends of the Recoleto, so under um, Father, the late procurator at that time, no? Father Simeon Asensio. The Ayalas, no, when they're developing that lot, that lot in Makati, they were inviting the Recoleto to build a church in that area where the Recoleto Street is uh, located on the name Recoleto Street. No, when we asked permission from the Archbishop of Ma Manila, that I think he was Cardinal Rufino Santos, no, he I, I, um, he declined. He did not give permission, no, for the Recoleto to build that a church in that lot offered to us by the Ayalas. That's why the name Calle Recoletos is maintained out of that memory. It was offered to us and the Archbishop of Manila at that time, the Cardinal, you know, Rufino Santos, you know, declined the, we might say, uh, permission you know, for the Recoletos to open a parish in that area owned by the Ayalas. So that's why the Recoletos Street is maintained in what? In, to just to remind that the Ayalas were interested in opening a church operated and administered by the Recolex. That's all. Thank you, Father Emil. Uh, another one, another curious question. Sino po, from uh, Sir Rafael Sagrado, sino po ang unang Recolex Saint? Saint Ezekiel Moreno. One OAR priest argues na si Saint Magdalena of Nagasaki. Your say po. Salamat po. Okay. Kung, kung pare ang pag-uusapan, the first recollect priest to become saint was Saint Ezekiel Moreno. The priest, as a priest. He was also a bishop. Okay. Pero in the order of we might say canonization, ang unang recollect saint is none other than um, Saint Magdalena of Nagasaki, who was, she was beatified and connected together with Saint Lorenzo Ruiz and companions. That's why, as a the canonization process, no, yung naunang na canonize as a saint, no. At sumunod si Saint Ezekiel Moreno. But we emphasize more of the first recollect priest and bishop to become a saint, and he is uh, Saint Ezekiel Moreno. The rest is just, ano, it's, it's just more on the process of canonization. But if you follow the order of canonization, no na si siempre si Magdalena of the Langasaki, the patroness of the Secular Agustinian Recollect Fraternity. Uh, from uh, James uh, Viliran, it is common that there are those who prefer one image like La Salud, Perpetual Health, sa Baclaran than others. Parang follow-up question ito kanina about yung sinabi mo, Father Emil, na there is only one Mama Mary and yet there are so many titles. So I guess uh, it was uh, made clear already. And uh, from Sir Jason, uh, I was uh, looking for this, yung kanun niya about uh, yung uh, meron po ba tayong collection ng uh, musical settings ng misal na ginawa ng mga recoletos? Kung meron, saan po pwede makita? Okay. So may I answer that one? If you want musical composition, no? of the old, no? we have the collection of Father Domingo Carcelier, no? No? Canticos Sagrados, in three editions, 1937, 1957, and 1967. No? All of these are available, no? these are old copies in the Archivo Recoleto. Okay? So these are musical compositions by Father Domingo Carcelier, whose music 
no, with the lyrics composed by Don Emeterio Bar Barcelon, no, Gloria a Jesus, won the first prize and became the official hymn of the 33rd International Eucharistic Congress held in Manila in 1937. So we have these compositions and they are bound and we have available copies in the Archivo Recoleto. In Bohol, we have the Misa Baklayana, composed in the 1820s no, by Recollects. And some pieces were composed by lay people trained by the Recollects. No? Kaya sasabihin nyo, hindi ito sa mga Jesuita. 1820s, under pa ng mga Recoletos. Remember, the Jesuits were expelled from the Philippines in 1768. And when they came back, they were assigned in Mindanao. And in return, they were kicked out of Mindanao. But thanks to God, we maintain Misamis, Oriental and Occidental. So from the 1820s, the Misa Baklayana, mostly were composed by recollect musicians. But unfortunately, they did not sign their names. They're, you know, these people you know, are very humble, yet they want to glorify God rather than glorifying their own composition by, by, their, by their names. That's all. Thank you, Father Emil. See, si Professor, may itadagdag pa? In Imno was titled ano, Gloria a Jesus and Cielo, no? And remember, or oh, you do not know, you remember, <laughs> the second place was also won by Father Domingo Carcillier. Beni, Beni, Jesus a consolarme. So, naka first two places siya sa pa contest na yon, sa na uh, hymn of the Eucharistic Congress in 1937. Okay. And also the music, I have collected more than 12 hymns to Saint Ezekiel Moreno written by Recollects and former Recollects. So, mahilig talaga ang Recoletos. Bata pa, seminarian pa, nagsusulat na ng libro. Especially Father Leo Alaraz sa USGR, Father uh, Haranilia also, and many other priests. Leander Barros. <laughs> there are many recollect musicians. Father Celestino Yoldi, Father Emil. Uh, so, this part of their uh, music ministry, evangelization tool for uh, teaching music or teaching people. Oh, Father Diego Serra, mismo sa bamboo organ fame. Thank you. Thank you, Father Emil. Uh, professor. One proof that uh, somebody from Tai Tai Palawan is joining us. We have here a question from a certain William Hulao Jr. I hope I pronounced well the correctly the apellido, no? Hulao or Julao from Tai Tai. Good morning, Father Emil and Professor Romanilios. Palawan is celebrating its 400 years of Christianization this coming 2023. Is this the right year to celebrate the 400 years of Christianization? Since before the first recollect missionaries arrived in 1623, there was already a diocesan priest assigned in Cuyo in the person of Father Juan de Santa Cruz. If not 2023, when is the right year to celebrate the 400 years of Christianization of Palawan? Thank you very much, Paul. Professor. Uh, in 1618, Juan de Santa Cruz, a secular clergy was assigned to Cuyo and the Calamianes. Later on, he gave up because so vast and jurisdiction, no? Cuyo, Calamianes, that is ano, the northern Palawan. So he gave it up. Hindi nila alam na wala na pala si Father Juan de Santa Cruz from 1618. In 1619, Binigay na sa Recoletos ang Cuyo and Calamianes, pero ayaw tanggapin kasi walang tao. In 1622, uh, August 27, 1622, the Bishop of Pedro de Arce gave to the Recolex, handed over to the Recolex, Cuyo and the Calamianes, but with one certain condition. They have to get the permit or the license from the Governor General, the Royal Vicer Alonso Fajardo de Tensa. And when they obtained, when the Recollects obtained the permit uh, on January 23, 1623, that was the time, a few days later, that they went to Cuyo and Calamianes. So you cannot pinpoint, uh, if you want to stay, 1618, the start of the evangelization, 
Okay na, pero dumaan na yon. What is very good to celebrate is the arrival of the recollects. Kasi si Father Juan de Santa Cruz, walang masyadong nagawa doon. The systematic evangelization of Cuyo and the Calamianes started with the Augustinian recollects in 1623. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, meron pa ba questions dito? Meron pa isa. Alonso Fajardo, Detensa. We have the, probably, we consider this as the second to the last question before we end the, quest, the open forum. Second to the last, from James Biliran. In relation to that statement that Recoletos helped in agriculture, etc., I also noticed it seems it was not mentioned in the talk that the Recollects have been influential, that they became related to <laughs> San Miguel Corporation. There are rumors, rumors that the Recollects have something to do with the formula of the San Miguel beer. I don't know if there is truth in this. Uh, professor. You know, Jan? Uh... A certain employee of San Miguel Brewery, later San Miguel Cor Corporation, revealed to me that he saw in the vault of the San Miguel Corporation in Tagig now or in, in Pasig Corporation there, the formula of the San Miguel beer Walang iwanan tayo dito. So the formula of the was concocted by a recollect brother. If you want to confirm, you go to San Miguel Corporation. Diyan sa... Pa, pa, saan ba yun? Oh, so diyan sa... Ano. So you go there and go, if you have permission to go inside the vault, the big vault of the San Miguel Corporation, it's there, the formula concocted or invented by a recollect religious brother. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, actually, wala na palang question dito. Kala ko it was a second to the last. That was the last question. And um, we close the open forum. Thank you for your active participation, our online participants. Thank you, Father Emil and uh, Professor Romain Milius for uh, entertaining, for replying to these questions. Before we close this program, let me acknowledge the following. First, we thank the four entities that jointly organized this uh, lecture series, namely the Recoleto School of Theology, the Commission on History, Culture, and Heritage Recoletos, the Commission on Communications and Publications Recoletos, and the Recoletos Communications Incorporated, or RCI. Second, we also equally are grateful to our resource speakers, resource speaker, Pai Emil Pilatan and the reactor, Professor Romanilius, as well as to all of you, our dear participants, brothers and sisters joining us online. Based on our data here, we have a total of 434 registered participants, but we peak at 178 kanina, around 1120. And at one point, yeah, we have uh, reached that uh, total number, 178. Thirdly, we also thank the technical committee headed by Prior Rinaldo Haranidia OAR and assisted by our brand new solemnly professed brothers, Prior Julius Tinapau, James Harold Gatinau, and Enrique Austria, also Fry Jerix Vincent Gamulo. Thank you and see you on September 25 for the fourth and last lecture in our series.